morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, Ma. Um, happy New Year, everyone. Um, September is the new calendar year in um, Redeemed Christian Church of God. And then welcome to another beautiful Sunday as we start uh, <clears throat> Sunday school. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to set my timer. So today's topic is, today's lesson, lesson one, because we're starting a new um, Sunday school manual today, which hopefully will be made um, available soon to everyone. So our, our lesson today is praise and worship. I just want us to quickly bow down our head, uh, our head as we pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for another beautiful Sunday to come and learn at your feet. Father, we pray, oh Lord, that as we listen to you today, you, you, you will teach us yourself in the name of Jesus. And I pray, oh Lord, that by the end of the Sunday school today, oh Lord, we shall understand what it means to praise and worship you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, yeah, with me one second, please. Okay. Yeah, so the, our opening prayer says, Lord, give me an understanding of what it means to praise and worship you. Lord, give me an understanding of what it means to praise and worship you. And um, our memory verse will be taken from 2 Chronicles 29, verse 30b. 2 Chronicles 29, verse 30b. I'll read, or we cannot read together. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Again, and they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Praise the Lord. And also we'll quickly go to our Bible passage. Our Bible passage is from Psalms 95, verse 1 to 6. Psalm 95, verse 1 to 6. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock, to the rock our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great God and a great king above all gods. For in his hands are the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills is also, is also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Praise the Lord. Our lesson introduction today says that people view worship as slow and melodious songs that often require the closing of eyes and lifting hands in reference to God. While people think praise is the singing of song, usually fast songs, you know, with the drums and um, everything, you know, dancing to God, we believe that praise is the fast ones where you dance and everything. And then we believe that worship is the slow, slow songs where you have to close your eyes and raise your hands. However, these two words mean more than just singing dancing or raising of hands. Praise and worship are, are, have many things in common, but they are not exactly the same thing. So that is part of what we're trying, what, what we're going to learn today. What is praise? What is worship? Are they the same thing? You know, we're, we're going to try to understand the two concepts. Yeah. And if by God's grace, we're able to understand them, it will take us into a new realm in our relationship with God. I pray that things will change, um, you know, even after we learn this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so we have two lesson outline. The first lesson outline says, praise and worship described, while our second outline is praise and worship compared. So we're gonna look at the first lesson outline first. Lesson outline one, praise and worship described. Praise. Um, it says, yeah, here are some Hebrew words in the Bible translated as praise. Yada meaning praise. We can take, because most of us don't have a manner, we can just take note of the Bible scriptures because we're not going to be reading them because of our time. Yada meaning praise. That's um, Genesis 29 35. Give thanks. 
or confess in First Kings eight thirty five. Um, another Hebrew um, word for praise is zama. Zama also means praise. That can be seen in Psalms nine verse two and um, ninety two verse one. Another word is Allah. Allah, the root of Alleluia, meaning to praise, honor, or commend. Um, Barak, meaning to bless. Psalms 103, verse 1 to 2. So the above terms con contain the idea of giving thanks and honor to one who is worthy of praise. And also, in the Greek language, praise takes its root from the following words. Hey, I, I, oh Lord Jesus, I knew. Is it written on the screen? Okay, so that's the that's the spelling, and that you, you can pronounce it the way we know how to pronounce it, meaning praise and doxa, to give glory. Luke seventeen eighteen, and also we're meant to understand that praise is the expression of one's gratitude, and request towards a, a deity like a, a god, especially in songs. So that is why. Christian praise can be identified as expression of gratitude, expression of gratitude and respect towards God, especially in songs. First Chronicles 16, 23, 25. Christian praise is also the joyful recounting of all that God has done for us. You know, you're praising God for everything that he has done. A, 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 joyful, a joyful celebration. The reasons Christians must praise God include it is a, it is a um, prescription for God's righteous people. That is um, Psalm, 22, 20, Psalm 22, verse 23, and also Psalm 23, verse 1. You know, it is a pres prescription for um, God's righteous people, a fulfillment of their vows to their maker. Praise the Lord. And also, it is a good means of letting the world know about the greatness of God. That can be seen in Psalms 1, 145, verse 11. For anyone that's just joining us, today's topic is praise and worship. And then we're on, on first um, on lesson outline one that, is, that talks about praise and worship described. And then we've just gone through Hebrew names of praise and the um, biblical meaning of what praise is. So now we're, we're, we're diving into worship. Um, worship, a root word of worship. So we're gonna look at Hebrew names as well for worship. Um, in Hebrew, it is shakan, which means X, to bow low or to prostrate one's self. Genesis 18.2, Exodus 34.8, and Psalms 29 verse two. In Greek, the, the word that is most often translated as worship in the New Testament is pros, proskenio, hey, how to get it, the Bible, which means to fall down before or bow down before or to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand or to prostrate oneself. It, I, I, if we are following, I think we can see the difference, you know, of what we, what we are saying with praise and then worship. Praise the Lord. So to worship is to show reference and adoration for, for a deity to, to something that, uh, okay, to something like that. So Christian worship, therefore, is an expression of reference and adoration for God. That's Christian worship. An expression of reference and adoration for God. Hey, Yoruba, Yoruba, you know, or something. I think that's the translation, Yoruba. Okay, so this solemn acknowledgement and appreciation of the personality of God. Psalms 100 verse 3. Um, Christians should know that worship is an attitude of the heart. Worship can be anywhere. It's an attitude of the heart. It can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be when you are when they say it's time for praise and worship, let us close our eyes and raise up our hands. Uh -uh. It, is, it is an attitude of the heart. 
because a person can go through the outcome motions and not be worshiping. Praise the Lord. Um, sometimes, I can't, sometimes back before Corona in church, you know, pastor is always saying things like connect, that we should try to connect to God. Do you understand? So it's, there, there has to be a connection from the heart. Praise the Lord. Uh, and when it says a person can go to the outcome motions and not be worshiping, if there's no connection, if you are not connected, um, if, you, if there's no total um, surrender, you know, if there's no total surrender, then that is not worship. So to truly worship God, we must let go of ourselves. And we should be willing to humble ourselves before God. Surrendering every part of our lives to his control. Second Samuel 17. There's a song that says, we told you nothing. I surrender all to you. So we must be willing to surrender all. Let go of yourself. Forget, forgetting your environment. Forgetting things that are happening with, with your environment. You know, when, 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 when we're doing um, Sunday School Preview, we're saying something about praise. Where you see people dancing. People are conscious of what they are doing when they are doing praise, you know, drumming and everything, they are conscious of, ah, this dance, hope I'm doing it well. Hope I'm not going off beats. Praise the Lord. Hope, uh, hope my top is not too showing. Hope, you know, that they, they are conscious of everything and everything. But worship, you get lost in worship that you don't even care your, about your surroundings. You don't, you, don't, you don't care about what is going on. Praise the Lord. Um, before we go to our lesson online, so I want us to ponder, ponder on the class activity for today, which says that um, students should express their views about how to praise and worship God. If there's time by the end of the, uh, by the, end of the Sunday school, probably we'll, we'll talk about it. Students should recall the difference between praise and worship or express their views about how to praise and worship God. Praise the Lord. So our lesson at line two is praise and worship compared. For those that are just joining us, we're already on lesson at line two. We're talking about praise and worship. And we've spoken, we've talked about praise already. And then we've talked about worship. And then there be the, um, Bible passages as well to, to back them up. But we're not, we didn't read most of them because of our time. So lesson at line two says praise and worship compared. Um, the similarities between praise and worship. Praise is part of worship, and both are complementary in fellowship with God. Psalm sixty-six verse four. Praise as well. Praise as well as worship is a lifestyle, not just an occasional activity. Hebrews thirteen fifteen. D differences. There is a thin line between praise and worship. Just a very tiny, thin line between praise and worship. Praise is opening up. Psalms 100 verse 4. Worship is entering. Uh, this, thing, this thing there is deep, honestly. Praise is opening up. And worship is entering. Entering into the throne of grace. Psalms 86 verse 9. Praise is boldly declaring. Psalms 197, verse 22. Worship is humbling, bowing in the presence of God. I hope you are following all these things. Even me, as I'm teaching now, I'm learning as well. Worship is humbling, bowing in the presence of God. Total, totally surrendering, you know. Praise, applaud what God has done. Isaiah 25, verse 1. <clears throat> Worship is honoring God for who he is. Did you, did you get that? We are, worship is when you're honoring God for who he is. He is the Alpha and he's the Omega. He's the creator of heaven and earth. You are worshiping him. You are honoring him for who he is. Praise can be given to anybody. You know when you go to parties and then they start praising, I think Oriki should be praised. If I'm wrong, someone can tell me later that I'm wrong. I think Oriki is praised when they're Martin Sion, you know, those things and all that. I think so. You know, so praise can be given to anyone, but worship should be reserved for God 
alone. Luke 4 verse 8, Matthew 4 verse 8 to 10. Praise is intertwined with thanksgiving. Worship is intertwined with surrender. Hey, worship is intertwined with surrender. Praise the Lord. So that's our that's our lesson. Um, um, what's it called? Second outline. You know, just looking at all the comparison between um, worship, and um, I just wanted to have that in in you know general in church. We say, oh, it's praise and worship time, and everyone will just stand up, and then the choir will start um, giving us songs, you know, to glorify God and everything, but. I pray that after today, even, you know what, after Sunday school, I want us to go back because our time, I'm looking at the time now. After, sun, after Sunday school today, I want us to go back to all these Bible passage. I want us to really understand the meaning of praise and worship. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. You know, worship is like a feeling. When we're talking, in our preview, we're saying, um, Dikimu, you were asked, he said, um, can you worship anyway? And the answer was yes. You can worship anywhere, anyhow. It, it, it's not necessary. Worship is not necessarily song. It's not until when you are singing. You don't. So, worship is not until when instrument is playing. Praise the Lord. Worship is the is a, is a feeling. Is a feeling of reference and adoration for God. You just adore God for who He is. Praise the Lord and. Well, well, we're rounding up. And also that praise is an expression of gratitude and respect towards God, especially in song. Praise the Lord. So, and worship does not have to be slow and melodious, like we said, you know, it's not necessarily closing of eyes. You know, we said earlier how that you can close your eyes and not connect to God. So it's not necessarily, oh, um, this person, how come, how come, how come pe people are leaning down? This person is not leaning down in church, you know? We will be shocked or amazed that the person that's even standing up or the person that is even sitting down is even connected in worship than the person that is on their, on their knees. Praise the Lord. So as Christians, we need to understand the difference between praise and worship because when we have um, a better understanding when we have an understanding of praise and worship, it helps us in a long way. It, it helps us in honoring God. Praise the Lord. So, and then towards the end, we said praise is intertwined with uh, thanksgiving and that it is a universal thing that can be applied to anybody. We said praise doesn't require much from us, just that the acknowledgement of the righteous act of God, you know, and then if we, if we start going through all the Bible passages, we, are, we understand that praise is usually presented as highly spirited, joyful, and uninhibited. God asks all creations to praise him. Praise the Lord. Why worship on the other hand goes, 10 more minutes. Why worship on the other hand goes deeper than praise? Worship is something that comes from the spirit. It is often said that worship is an attitude or a state of the art. Uh, in uh, John, in John 4, verse 23, it says, but the hour is coming. This was Jesus talking. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father is seeking such to worship him. So brethren, if we've not taken anything from today, I just want us to understand that worship for Christians goes beyond singing. Songs are just tools for worshiping. Praise stems from recognizing the good act of God. But worship is not a function of the act of God. Worship comes from the core of who the worshiper is and what God means to, for, for what God. So God can mean a different thing to me. It can be Jehovah, my provider. It can mean anything to another person. So it comes from within, from what God means to you. So in true worship, a Christian is required to surrender himself totally to God and adore him. Praise the Lord. So let's just quickly go to our, 
Um, let's quickly go to the summary. So I, I've just summarized anyway, but that was a long sum summary. So the short summary is praise as well as worship as deep meaning. Though they are complementary, there's a thin line between them. We have um, seven more minutes. So seven, three minutes. Does anyone have any contribution? I have yeah. a question. Okay. Question. Yeah. We have seven I, more minutes. I just heard you just now say something that, um, I mean, like a question you you emphasize um, or re-echo the question. I didn't hear when the um, Kimu were asked that that one can worship anywhere. I'm just trying to understand that aspect of the fact that you can worship anywhere. Maybe lights can be thrown into it because if from what you have said, from some of the outline, worship is is deep. Is 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 a total communion, a total focus on God is like um, being um, able to get yourself away from distraction and totally focusing on God. So I want to understand how one can be able to go into a deep worship anyhow and anywhere. Um, okay, before I answer, I, I hope you can move wise and stand by to throw for that light. See, worship, you know, we're we said you can be in the toilet. You can be in the bus. We said is this the connection of your, of, the, of your heart. Okay. Um, recently, a, a, colleague, a, a colleague and I were involved in a mini accident. Yeah. And we survived. But then we... we, we we, we were in the car and she was worshiping. She had tears. She wasn't saying anything. She was, the tears was not, she, she when, you know, when we're not talking, she said she's just, she was just worshiping God. She was just thanking God that because it was only God that did what he has done. Do you understand? That was not in the church setting. That was not, you know, that's my exaggeration of anywhere. That was her connecting to God not minding what was, you know, going on, not minding the surrounding. We're basically, we're, we're, in, we're, in a, we're in a bush, sort of. So that is why I said, she didn't even send that I was there. She did not, she could not care less that maybe the police officers were there or anything. She was connected. She was thanking her God. Nothing was coming out of her mouth, but she was in deep um, appreciation, honoring God who, uh, you know, when I said, God, your provider, maybe to her then she was like, God, my savior, you have saved me from this kind of calamity. So as I said, you can worship God anywhere. It doesn't have to be by songs. It doesn't have to be by drum. Sometimes just your total understanding of who God is and you connecting, you know, with God from the bottom of your heart. Can you, can you explain for that, please? We have yeah. five more minutes, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank, thank you, Stai Bitola. And thanks for that question. Um, I think that has been thoroughly explained, though. But like um, I, an instance is when you, when, when you see that Ijiyo with his tambourine, he goes around and, you know, he's shaking his tambourine. You don't even see, you may sometimes you see his mouth, his lips uh, moving. But he may not really actually say any um, other words that you will hear. Um, that is a classical example for it. When you worship, as in you can worship anywhere, it's a link between you and your God. You praise, you praise someone for doing something to you or for giving you something, but you worship for who the person is. Indeed, you don't, you don't really necessarily have to have gained anything from that person because it, a worship goes to a deity and it's appreciating God for who God is. So you could actually lay on your bed and in your thoughts, magnify God, Psalm, 1, Psalm, Psalm 19, for instance, right? Even the heavens declare the glory of God. You know, the clouds, you know, proclaim his mightiness and things like that. So you could 
actually worship and appreciate God for what um, he is. I think that, that's, uh, that's my understanding um, of it. Um, if I just, before we, um, I don't take our time, um, I just wanted to correct that Psalm 197 uh, that was um, mentioned is Psalm 107, Psalm 107 verse 22. So um, um, sorry for that error on the slide. So it's Psalm 102 verse. Then I also want to add that one thing jumped at me. That was my question that I was going to ask before the Kenneth Richards question. Uh, or it wasn't a question, but just something that jumped at me while going through this. You know, there was a place that was talking about why Christians worship, I mean, praise God. When you praise, you praise aloud, you talk aloud. And one thing that I picked from there is saying that praise also teaches, um, it, 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 it expresses God's goodness to, 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 to people around you. Because it's a, it's a good means of letting the world know that um, the greatness of God, according to Psalm 145, verse 11. And when you look at that, you see that there is actually a blessing. You can actually use praise as a tool for evangelism. If we go back to the Yoruba parlance and the musicians that they precinct people, there are lots of records or, uh, or CDs or, or, or songs that we have heard that people who have been pre-sang and you don't even know the people, you never met them before, but you know so much about them by the value of the research and the depth of what people have sang about them, right? Um, I don't want to take our time, so I'm not going to mention names, but then you, that's a kind of thing. So when you praise God, people around you also try to, they get a vibe of who, I mean, of what, what you're talking about and who you are praising. So it's a form of evangelism. And that is supported also by, the, by in Isaiah and also in Romans 10, verse 15. Romans 10, verse 15 says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So it's a way of evangelism when you praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any more contribution? We have three more minutes. I have a timer. We have three more minutes. So within that three more, three more minutes before we um, read our conclusion, does anyone have any contribution? We only have one minute. One minute. Huh. Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So in conclusion, conclusion please. Praise and worship. Oh, I can't see clearly. Sorry, let me look at my manual. In conclusion, praise and worship are part of the common goal of getting closer to God. As we draw near to God, it draws near to us. James 4, 8. And our closing prayer says, Father, inspire me to praise and worship you appropriately. Let that be our prayer for the whole week. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name and it will help us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Um, we've come to the end of um, Sunday school. Praise the Lord. Let's just pray that prayer that Father inspire me to always praise you and to always worship you appropriately in a way that you will be satisfied, in a way that you will be pleased with me. Lord, this is my heart cry. This is my heart desire. The Lord, you will help me to worship you appropriately. You will help me to worship you in spirit and in truth. And as we pray that prayer, I also want us to begin to appreciate God and give him thanks for all that he has been doing in our lives, for his grace, for his mercy, for his love, for his tender mercies that we daily receive and we daily enjoy. Let's give God the glory. Let's give him the praises. Let's magnify the ancient of days for the privilege that he has given us to gather again this morning. Zechariah 4, 6 says, 
not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Why don't you just appreciate him this morning? The Lord, uh, I'm a 